at the very end, we started thinking about putting the hose in the back into the truck, and um, it was again in an odd way. It was so intact. This the, the, the truck it, it was it was so um, destroyed in a way but but it had this kind of strength about it as well and we had been talking with uh, captain Fody and the men at engine six all along and so we thought it would be a good idea to invite them uh, back to the to the prison to the correctional facility uh, in orange county to do that to lay the hose back into the truck they had really um, helped us along the way talking to us about the exhibition and it seemed like uh, the thing to do. So we met a group of them, uh, I think four or five came down, uh, met us at the truck and the hose was all cleaned and set, set aside and uh, they went ahead and we watched them and talked to them as they, they laid the hose back in the truck. And, and it was very interesting for, for us because uh, we sort of stayed in the background a little bit and listened and watched very carefully. And I, and I remember um, them talking about the day and where um, the men sat in the truck and how they arrived on the, on the scene. And it was um, kind of a way, too, that we got to know these, uh, the guys at Engine 6 a little, little better and exactly what happened that, that day. He, there's only a couple of pictures that um, hopefully uh, they'll show one at the exhibit. But if you look at the back of the rig, the back of the rig was on the other side of that bridge that collapsed. So it was pretty much in a safe zone, you know. The front of the rig was right towards building one as it collapsed. So this took a lot of, you know, a lot of heat from the fire. This was buried in a lot of debris. And as you remember, days and days of burning, un underground burning, this is the same uh, fireball that Billy was running away from right the front of this rig. So it's still in high pressure. This is what uh, this is what we would pull to put that that hose to charge it to feed the World Trade Center. This is high pressure. So this is Jack's last action right there before he uh, left the rig. Uh, let's see if I can remember. Billy could probably tell you better, but Jack was the chauffeur. He was driving. Lieutenant Thomas O'Hagan would be sitting in the front seat there. I believe uh, Tommy Holohan had the nozzle, so he would be sitting over there. Billy Johnson was here. We're supposed to have a guy in this seat, but the city took that away from us, so we're down to a four-man engine. This would be the doorman, but we don't have one. And this was uh, Paul Byer. He had control. Now, other guys were on the rig also. Uh, Billy, Billy Green, of course. Uh, he probably jumped into the seat, you know, because yeah. it, was, it was a big event. So whoever okay. get on the rig got on the rig, you know, because they wanted to help. You get down? Get down? And uh, I believe Bob Emmons was also on the rig also. He must have been sque squeezed in here somewhere. Then that's who, ain't, that's who went, and of course, Bob and Jack took the uh, took the hose to the, you know hook up to the trade center, put the machine and pumps, and Billy went in with them. And uh, you know Billy's story. I think it's important people don't forget, right? Yeah, absolutely. This is one of the first rigs that responded there, so I think it was a good choice. I'm sure the guys who were on it would be honored, you know. I just hope it's important to the families as well, you know. This was their last ride, their last ride in. So when they were done, they removed this, this building and um, we attached it to the cab of the army truck, uh, tarped it, and came to the museum. Uh, so when we brought it to the museum, it was a very much more of a public thing. Uh, we had, by now, there was great anticipation. We hadn't made announcements, and uh, everyone knew we were about to install the the, uh, the fire engine in the galleries and, and have an exhibit. 
This is an exhibit project unlike many others because the cycle is so short between history happening and having a historical exhibition. So a year after this happened, there's an exhibition out of the history of this. And in a way, we're still in the middle of this history un unfolding. Uh, so in a very strict historical sense, it, it's a tremendous artifact that speaks to that day. And when we collected this and when we collected the hundreds of other objects, would someone want to know what happened on September 11th? And what greater thing would you have to be stand in the presence of than, than this fire engine? Uh, really speaks to the rescue and the, and the drama and the, and the scale of what happened that day. But then there's just a great emotional sense as human beings and um, that you have when you see this sort of thing. I'm always fascinated, again, watching people come through that we can see now. But you have to wonder what is somebody going to think in a hundred years when they see this. And so um, I think we did the right thing. Yeah.